Lesson 4. Non-citizens. In Lesson 3, we studied the two ways in which a person could gain U.S. citizenship. Through birth and a legal process called naturalization. In this unit, in this lesson in particular, we are going to examine the two types of non-citizens, both legal and illegal aliens. First, keep in mind that all Americans, except the Native Americans, are descendants from immigrants. What is an immigrant? A person who was born in one country, who moves to another country to live permanently. A person migrates from one land to another to live there permanently, an immigrant. America is a nation of immigrants. There is perhaps no greater symbol of America as a nation of immigrants than the Statue of Liberty. Located in New York Harbor on a 12-acre island, the Statue of Liberty enlightening the world was a gift of friendship from the people of France to the people of the United States and is a universal symbol of freedom and democracy. It was dedicated on October 28th, 1886, designated as a national monument in 1924, and restored for her centennial, her 100th anniversary, on July 4th, 1986. The inscription on the Statue of Liberty reflects its goals. Part of the inscription, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. There are two types of immigrants, legal and illegal aliens. An alien is the term for a non-citizen, an alien. Let us first focus on the legal aliens in America. Please understand, again, legal aliens are not citizens, but they can live here permanently it is quite difficult to become a legal alien. It's a very strenuous, long, and laborious process. It's expensive, time-consuming. There are filing forms and legal fees. And these obstacles for legal entrance into to the United States is one cause for the number of illegal aliens we have trying to get into our country. The United States places limits called quotas on the number of immigrants who can enter the country legally each year. There are five categories through which a legal alien can gain entrance into the United States. Family-sponsored, employment-based, diversity immigrant, political asylum, refugee. Let's take a look at each of these categories. Family-sponsored. There is no numerical limit 
on the number of immediate relatives of U.S. citizens to gain entrance into the United States. Now, by immediate relative, we're talking about spouse. Minor children under the age of 21 and parents. Now, notice the non immediate relatives. There are limits, there are quotas on the number who can get in. And these are the different categories and the amount of time it takes to be able to go through this process and to get in because of the big backlog. A lot of people want to come to the United States. A lot of people a lot of people want to come here. Family sponsored, employment based. Now there are quotas on this category of entrance. Notice that we give priority to workers with extraordinary ability in sciences, arts, education, business, or athletics or those who are outstanding professors or researchers with at least three years experience in teaching or research that recognize internationally, or those who are managers and executives. So this is the priority worker category. Professionals holding advanced degrees, PhDs and masters, at least five years of Progressive post-baccalaureate experience. Persons of exceptional ability in sciences, arts, or business. Skilled workers, professionals, other workers. And then special immigrants, ministers, religious workers, investors. So, you can gain legal entrance into the country through employment. The last three categories, diversity immigrant, political asylum, refugee. Diversity immigrants would be from those countries that are not well represented in the United States. As mentioned in lesson two, we are a country of great diversity. And we welcome people from all over the world, particularly from those countries that are not well represented. Political asylum, this is a category in which a person seeks to come here because they are being persecuted for either their political views, their religious views, and if they stayed in their mother country, uh, they would either be imprisoned, maybe killed, assassinated. So they come here seeking asylum, a safe haven, protection, because of those views, because of their religious beliefs. And then the refugee category, the category in which has been controversial. Think of the Syrian refugees as a result of their civil war in Syria. They've been fleeing to many parts of Europe a refugee is a person uh, whose homeland has been devastated, maybe because of a natural disaster or a hurricane, earthquake, or civil war, in this case, of Syria. And uh, they want to come to America, to the United States, uh, for an opportunity to... Uh, the family to have a chance of starting over in a safe place with a good environment. Uh, refugee. 
So those are the five categories to gain entrance into the United States. Notice again, highest priority goes to relatives of U.S. citizens and people with needed job skills. Legal aliens hold jobs. They pay taxes. They do not have full political rights. That is the one exception. They cannot vote. Uh, they cannot run for political office. In many, um, they cannot uh, serve in the federal government in the civil, what's known as the civil service system. As you can see by this screen. They must carry identification cards with them, known as green cards. These green cards are issued every 10 years or so. And again, it gives them permanent residence in the United States until the day they die if they wish. On the other hand are the illegal aliens. These are people who have come to this country illegally, without permission, bypassing that process. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to, um, yearning to, um, holy sh It's estimated three million illegal aliens coming into our country per year. Many aliens live in the United States illegally. Uh, what is the estimation? 11 million, 12 million, 13 million. We really do not know because they are living in the closet, so to speak. If they were found out, they would have to be deported, sent back to their original country. Most come looking for a better life in a better land, but without friends and family, life is hard. Mexico is obviously one of the countries uh, that uh, many illegals uh, come from, but also other countries in Central America, Latin America. They're not all Mexican-oriented people coming in across the border. Well, how do they become illegal? You enter without authorization or inspection. That's estimated six to seven million of those. You stay beyond your authorized period of legal entry, four to five and a half million of those. In other words, you have a visa to come here for a specified period of time, but you just keep staying here. You don't leave or you violate the terms of your legal entry. But maybe a quarter of a million do that. The unfenced rural mountain and desert 2,000 mile border between California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas is a major entrance area for illegal immigrants. A 2,000 mile border. A common means of bordering of border crossing is to hire a professional known as a coyote uh, to smuggle you into the United States for pay. Laws forbid hiring illegals. Work is hard to find, but it is done routinely, mostly in farm construction, excuse me, farm work, uh, migrant farm work, construction, tourism, hotels. The continuing practice of hiring unauthorized workers has been referred to as the magnet for illegal immigration. They come here because oftentimes they are willing to do work that American citizens uh, are not willing and able to do. Uh, businesses hire them and pay them under the table. Uh, their cheap labor um, drives down the cost of business expenses. And uh, if you take a look at the economy of Mexico, uh, many in Mexico uh, live in extreme poverty or moderated poverty. The average income uh, is uh, very low. Uh, so the economic incentive that benefit both the illegal workers and the businesses desire for low-cost labor uh, again, they live in fear of deportation. And amnesty is the concept of granting forgiveness for those who have come here illegally. And uh, that's another issue for another time and another lesson.